Alright, welcome back guys. In this video I'm going to finish off the pathfinding for a bit so we're going to be able to, able to select multiple units and right click and move them into the position that we choose and that's going to be great then we can control our units throughout the scene and our strategy game will begin to take place. So I'm going to quit this now. Um, we need to change a couple of things in our mouse script and our unit script. If you've been following along guys you can follow this totally from scratch. So I've created all this stuff from scratch from the beginning of the series. And I'm just going to add another public variable here. So a public vector 3. So we need to store the right click point. So the, the point at which the user right clicks in the scene. Let's just recap what we've done here so far. When a user right clicks in the scene this diamond animation is played to give the user some visual feedback of where we want the unit to move. And the, the unit needs to know this information now. Um, so we need to store these points in 3D space where we want the unit to go. And what a better place to do it than a mouse script. So the right click point we can actually store the value down here. So when the, unit, when the user right clicks the mouse we initiate the diamond object, we give it a name and then we can right click point equals hit point. So the raycast hit point on the object. Okay that's cool. When the raycast hits the terrain main object for now and that's all we need to do. Oh wait a minute, there's one more thing. Um, when we select the unit guys, I needed to, I forgot to do this in the previous videos, we need to change the selected boolean value in the unit script to true. Even though it happens when we drag the units, it doesn't happen when we click them. So if you've been following along and you might have noticed that, I'm just going to put it in now. Change the unit selected value to true. That's really easy to do. Hit collider game object gets component the unit script selected equals true okay moving on to our unit scripts now there's only one more thing we need to put in here and as a public boolean is walkable and I'm going to put equals true here for now um, you might wonder why this is because we're going to put this unit script on every single unit in the game whether it's a building or a monster or something we can control so in in some cases we don't want to move the units we don't want them to walk because when we right click that might be a gathering point or we might want nothing to happen so we need to check if the unit's um, walkable or not if we can move it with a path and the unit's a really good place to do this the unit script because this is just a generic script that configures our units all the things we need to know about our unit basically so is walkable equals true so we do want it to walk in this in this game okay we're going to add a couple more things to the unit script by the end of this video but um, we're going to do all of our movement stuff in a new script so I'm going to call it unit path okay let's open this up for now and I'm also going to open up the A star path script we did in the previous video because I'm, I need some of this code I'm going to copy and paste it to start with so we need to use the pathfinding framework to begin with otherwise it won't work and uh, I'm going to take a few things we don't need the target position because that's the right mouse position now I'm going to take all these class variables put them in here remove I'm going to remove these um, comments because we know what they do now and uh, we need the start method, we need the on complete, and we need the fixed update. So just let's just copy and paste all this in. I'm not forgetting the curly brace, and that's all good. We don't need the target position here. We don't want to set the path in the start function. We want to set the path when the unit's selected and the right mouse button's been clicked. I'm going to delete that. On path complete, that's absolutely fine. The fixed update, that's fine for now. Um, and this is all our pathfinding logic. So this is all our pathfinding stuff, that's all we need to know. And uh, we're going to do the right click test and stuff within the late update function. Public void late update when everything else is being worked out. Um, so we need to reference the unit script because we need to know if the unit is selected or not before we can assign a path to that unit. So within unit path script we can just make another private a unit for the unit script, I'm going to call it a unit of lowercase and in the start method we can say unit equals get component unit again so we're getting the unit script okay back to the late update so if the unit is selected to start with and if the user just clicked the mouse button down the right mouse button close things off we want to set a path here and we can easily do that like we did in the previous video. We can use the seeker object and start path 
from the transforms position of this unit to the target position, which is the mouse, let's refer to the mouse script, right, okay, mouse, and it's not referencing the right, let's have a look, see what we've done here, so, okay, we need to make this a static object, okay, there's only one instance of the mouse script in the entire game, that's why we're accessing it like this, um, look, we can make it static and then we can access this from the path unit script, so let's see if it works now, mouse, right click point that's awesome okay and then we're going to bring in the callback method of on path complete and that's all we need to do so if the unit is selected and the mouse button's down simply start the path and you might have noticed we can if we drag a range of units then they will also start a path okay and then you might think wait a minute all the units are going to get to the same position in the game so we need to, in the future, we'll be doing formations and things like that for the units so they don't overlap each other. Um, but that's how we do things for now. So I think that's all we need to do in this script. Let's save it out, see if we've missed anything. Okay, in the fixed update, we can do one more test just to be on the safe side. We can say if the unit is not walkable, so it is walkable, then just return. Okay, so if the unit is not walkable, we test for this uh, variable we just assigned in the unit script then we just return we don't want to do anything and we can also put it up here if we wanted to if the unit selected and the unit is walkable and then we can do it All right, guys so um, I think that's all we need to do let's go back to our unit our character unit let's remove the a star path script and let's add the unit path script, our new unit path. Speed, I'm going to speed it right up in this video, 500 for the speed. And for the next waypoint distance, I was playing about 10 is too much. I'm going to put 5. I think 5 will be absolutely fine. And uh, let's just test things for now before we move on to something else. So select the unit, right clicking, and our unit's moving to the position. Okay, that's really great. But I can deselect the unit and then I can overwrite the path, then it'll go to the path. Okay, but there's a few errors here. I, I know that the unit's kind of gliding from side to side. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, change our simple smooth modifier. Instead of simple, I'm going to put Bezier and make it yeah two subdivisions. That's absolutely fine. And now, if you know, if we test the game, it's a bit more natural. Um, that's awesome. There's no path being assigned if no units are selected. If there is, it bo boom, the unit goes. Okay. Um, so things are a bit straighter now, the unit kind of like moves a bit more naturally like a human would do. Um, okay, so there's a few there's a few things I'm going to address here. Um, I'm, firstly, I'm going to replace the character prefab and I'm going to bring in another character in the game and put it around here. Remember to deselect the selected graphic because we can't do that to begin with. Let's play the game. So we can also control multiple units if I select them. So multiple units can go to the same position. And okay, the next thing I'm going to change is um, how they collide with each other because at the moment the unit collides with the other one, it stops the path. And to address this, I'm going to go to the unit script and within the awake function, void awake, we're going to change some physics values. So, really easy one line of code. To do this, we can just um, ignore if oh, I want all the units to ignore other units in the game. So, say physics ignore collision, ignore layer collision, okay, and all we need to do is bring in the layer 1, we want the units to ignore, well the units, we want them to ignore themselves, and this is on layer 8, so rather than type in the layer name, if I go to add layer here, the each layer has a um, index, so the unit layer is on layer 8, so we bring in the index rather than the name of the layer, just how this thing works, and the last values are true or false, whether we want to ignore the layer or not, so we put true, and that is great because now all these units are ignoring other units in the game but if the units are building for example we might not want to do that um, if the units are building we need to rescan the grid and change the path anyway but that's a future t thing to tackle and uh, I'm going to play the game now they should walk straight through each other and that is okay because once we do our formations and stuff the units will not kind of collide when they stop walking okay Boom, done. So now they won't get in each other's way, and that's fine for now. We can deal with this later on. You might ask, well, we could use local avoidance if we wanted to, but I guess that's for massive um, 
MMOs or something or RPGs. But um, that that tackles that issue for now. Okay, is there anything else? I think that's what I wanted to address in this video, guys. Um, it's been quite a big video. So now we can control multiple units in the game, and now we can maybe uh, make this game more visually appealing and stuff, and add some level aspects and the buildings and things like that. Alright guys, so thanks for watching the video. Um, I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.